morning. I'm David Rakovich, president of the Stockton Maritime Museum here today on Thursday, February the 10th, 2022, for a much overdue progress video. We're on the forecastle here of the Lucid on this beautiful sunny winter day, and we wanted to bring you up to speed on what we've done since we posted our last video. I'm standing up here in the forecastle because we've got two anchors up here installed, which is new just in the last couple of months. Um, in the last year, we've had to cancel a lot of our work parties, but during the week, we've had a limited number of volunteers coming out to continue to work. So we've got a lot done. We've got a lot to show you today. So besides getting the anchors up here, those of you that have supported us in the past with the gun fund, recall that we were buying a 40 millimeter Borfus cannon. And I'm happy to say, here it is. This 40 millimeter anti-aircraft cannon that this ship originally had when it was built, um, we acquired it about a year ago where we had it at our shop and a crew of volunteers completely disassembled it and restored it. Um, it works, well, it doesn't fire, of course, but I mean, it works. So let me give you a sh a, an example of how well it works here. Um, you can see how easy this thing operates with one hand. Um, so this has all been rebuilt and installed. And what we did not get with the gun is the original gun tub. This is a gun tub or splinter shield is what they call it in the Navy. It's, it's not armament of any type, of course. This is to protect the gun and the crew from waves coming over the bow of the ship here. Uh, oftentimes there was blue water sweeping over the deck here. So it could be quite a dangerous place to be if you weren't uh, strapped down or holding onto something. So this is a big milestone for us. Thanks to all of you that supported us so we could acquire this gun and restore it and install it. Um, we've got another couple weeks to finish this gun tub and uh, then we'll get it painted and, and we're good to go here. And all those, all of you donors that support us here will have your name here on this gun tub located somewhere. So we're uh, pretty happy. This was a major milestone for us. It makes the Lucid, once again, look more like the warship that she once was. We're gonna go now down below and show you some uh, work we've completed in the last couple months in the anchor windlass room and, and in the bosun locker. So come along. Here we are in the bosun locker. Obviously, we're at the bow below the forecastle. We call this, our non-sailors call this the pointed end of the ship. But this is the originally, uh, this is the restored bosun locker, which looks just like it did when this ship was put into commission. This single compartment alone required hundreds of hours of work and uh, by volunteers to remove the junk and repair the damage that was done in here. And one of our volunteers that I've mentioned before, Jack Frost, that comes up from Arizona, spent days putting this back together, rebuilding the original shelves as they were uh, back in the 1950s. Here's an example of how we get this authenticity. This is an original as-built photo taken by the Navy when these ships were delivered. So they can, they have, the builder has proof that everything was uh, supplied that was in the contract. And right behind it, of course, this is the anchor capstan and windlass room. This is the gear I showed on our last progress video. We were just lowering it in here. This is the original equipment off the USS Pluck, which was uh, dismantled up in the Northwest 15 or 20 years ago. And through a great lead, we were able to find this equipment uh, in a junkyard and reinstall it. It won't run because some of these parts are fake. They're not real, but they look like the real deal. For example, these hawse pipes were originally made out of bronze. This is what brings the anchor chain from overhead back into the uh, um, chain locker below us. Uh, these were originally bronze, so naturally the scrappers uh, had, they got them before we ever got the ship. So we made these out of wood, but they look just like the original. So we're pretty proud of how this came out. Um, to the extent that we have uh, uh, damage control lockers and emergency shoring, and um, the kids always get a kick out of this when I show them that these ships were issued a large number of damage control plugs, or DC plugs. Uh, these are obviously for plugging holes. In the, in the hull, you find the right size and pound it in place to keep the water from coming aboard until you can get back to somewhere to repair the ship. Here's a cool display one of our volunteers put together for us. On the original 
lockers. We took the door off one of them, and he donated his uh, uniform of the day uh, from b back in the 60s, and he outfitted this compartment, this locker, the way they were trained when they were in basic training with the Navy, as outlined in the Blue Jacket Manual. You sailors will recognize this. The important thing to remember here is everything you owned had to go into this little locker. Uh, you could, this was done, this is how it was done in the 60s and 70s before you could even bring civilian clothes on board, but your work uniform and, and dress uniforms, everything went into one tiny little locker. So very interesting to see what these men, uh, how they stored all their gear. And here we are in the crew's head. I'm going to have John Van Huste, our Building Futures Academy instructor, uh, describe what's going on in here. So we have a couple of the students right now from the Youth Build program with Building Futures Academy. Uh, we're installing the fresh water system for the uh, main uh, sailor's head. Um, we're bringing one and a half inch pipe in and then we're going to divert it down to all of the sinks and then going off to the heads and the showers and such. Um, what they are learning on this program and this project right now is they're learning how to do the measuring, the cutting and the threading of a galvanized pipe. Uh, these students are actually at-risk students that have come through San Joaquin County, and um, we're teaching them uh, a lot of life skills, but a lot of trade skills, so trying to get them prepped up for union work. So when they leave here, they have a lot of certificates from OSHA, first aid training, and what we call an MC3 training, which gives them uh, a, like a f head start getting into a union program through the apprenticeship. So that's what they're doing in here right now. Perfect. This head will be operational in another. Uh, yeah, 15, weeks. 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Thank you, John. Thank you. Project. Thank okay. You. Thank you, students. Okay, here we are on the rough and ready, right on the starboard side of the Lucid here. One of the biggest projects we accomplished this past summer, the summer of 21, was hull work on the Lucid. This is the starboard hull. We spent the entire summer, sanding, caulking, and repairing the hull. Um, we still have to get the lower portion because we got into the winter before we got that low, and uh, the wood is too wet now to primer paint, so we're gonna finish that in the spring. But the really cool part about this whole project, I had a sailor tell me, you know, all ships have names, but until they get their numbers, they don't have their soul. So if you look here on the bow, we have the ship's numbers, uh, installed in the proper location. Those, the outline of those numbers were actually chiseled into the wood side of the ship, so it was pretty easy to follow uh, directions there. The, the color, you notice, is a little different there because those are painted on primer. This darker gray of the rest of the hull is the haze gray that will be applied there around those numbers here once the weather warms up and we have good painting weather. So we're pretty proud of this. The, the plan is now in the spring, we're gonna complete the hull work, prep work down to the water line. Then we're gonna turn the vessel. We're gonna take the lucid out in the middle of the river with this work boat, with, which has push knees on the front of it. We're gonna turn the vessel around and bring it back in so we could work on the port side of the hull from all the floats that we have down here. That'll make a tremendous difference on the appearance of this ship. Okay, for our last shot on board today, we're gonna to go up the river here about a mile and a half. Uh, we have some exciting news to announce. Um, many of you have seen this photo over the last nine years. This is a Photoshop of our dream of our downtown location. So we're gonna leave here in a few minutes and pick it up downtown and talk about this exciting news. Well, here we are at that downtown waterfront site that you saw in our Photoshop there on the ship. We've been showing it to people for the last 10 years. And the news I wanted to announce is we just acquired this site. On December 30th, just a couple months ago, we were finally able to acquire the site through a donation. Uh, more details to come on that, but we've had our eye on this for 10 years. And this is a phenomenal site. This is the historic Stockton waterfront. This is where the river boats used to dock right here and they would load them by hand right from this particular site. We're gonna post some photos to show you what that looked like. But to give you an idea of the history of this site, down here, this Spanish style building at the end of Weber here, at the end of the water, that's the old Hotel Stockton built during the teens. 
that's where men would get off the riverboats right here and be able to walk across the street to the Hotel Stockton. This was a major embarkation point for people coming and, and supplies coming and going to San Francisco would leave from right here. And as we pan a little to the left, the tall building in the distance is the Medical Dental Building, built in the late 20s, early 30s, which has just been turned into artist loft apartments. And as we scan further to the left, this is Weber Point right across the water here. That's where the first vessels used to come into Stockton and Captain Charles Weber built his home there and lived there for about 50 or 60 years. Um, right beyond the amphitheater there, you could see the red roof of the old Stockton City Hall, which they're gonna be moving out of here shortly. Uh, the white, large white building with the pointed roof in the distance is the War Memorial Civic Auditorium built right after World War I to honor our local veterans who uh, made the ultimate sacrifice in World War I. And then next to that is the modern and new University Plaza Hotel, the nicest hotel in Stockton. And then the new Stockton Arena, 10,000 seat multi-use arena that hosts all sorts of tournaments, uh, minor league basketball, hockey, and other things like that. Next door to that is where the Stockton Ports play, a new 5,000 seat stadium for our minor league ports. And beyond that is the, the, the metal buildings with the rusty roof. That's old Stockton Steel. That's where, I'm sorry, Stockton Ironworks. That's where the Delta King and the Delta Queen were manufactured right there around 1920. And just beyond that, beyond that large white craft over there is the Kohlberg Boat Works, where three sister ships of the Lucid were built in the early 1950s. And if you pan all the way over here to the left, this is an old warehouse building that's been repurposed, now houses, houses bars, restaurants, and offices. This was a warehouse built in the 1800s because in between us and that warehouse there, there was large uh, grain silos here where they stored wheat and they turned it into flour here. Sperry Flour Operation had a huge operation here for about 80 years. So not only a historic site, it's in the heart of downtown Stockton. The city hall is moving right on the other side of this building. We're gonna have several thousand employees stationed down here within the next couple years. And a beautiful waterfront site with 680 feet of waterfront location. So we could not have asked for a better outcome in this search for a permanent home for the Lucid. Our intent is to put a building here, uh, classrooms, shops, and offices, so we can continue our educational work that we're doing with the Building Futures Academy. We want to expand it to all the vocational high schools in San Joaquin County. And the powers to be at the San Joaquin County Office of Education are anxious to help us to make this happen. So this is the biggest news since we acquired the ship. And to wrap up this update video, I want to remind you, if you'd like to see more detail of the work we've accomplished in the last year, please check out our 2021 year in review, review video that Mark has posted both on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Both are listed under USS Lucid. There's about a 25 minute video there, set the music, showing all the different tasks our volunteers, students, and cadets have performed over the last year. It's really worth watching, professionally done. Okay, um, what I wanted to mention is a lot of people uh, always say our address is hard to locate. We're gonna post that on the screen here, but our mailing address for the museum is Stockton Maritime Museum, 4290 Cherokee Road, Stockton, California, 95215. Um, and our curator is Gary Howells, and we're gonna post his email address on the screen as well. Uh, those of you that have been supporting us, uh, we appreciate that. That's how we're able to get all this work done. Those of you that are ready to jump in now and start supporting us, use that 4290 Cherokee address. We also have an 800 number listed on both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel um, where you could contact us and we leave a message and we will get back to you. If you have artifacts, we talked about this in an earlier video. If you have minesweep artifacts or Navy artifacts you'd like to uh, potentially explore donating to us, uh, contact our curator, Gary Howells. His, uh, his email address will be posted on this video. So thanks again. This was a hell of a video to make because this is the biggest news uh, we've had to announce since we acquired the ship. So 
None of this could be done without your continued support. We appreciate it. We invite you to call us, come down and see the Lucid if you haven't done so yet. We give tours six days a week, but by appointment, which is necessary. Thanks and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.